favorites, long time no see. I've been in my A for a while. I'm so sorry about that. It's a whole thing that I'll get into later, but good morning. It is very gloomy in Indiana today. <laughs> so the lighting probably won't be that great today, um, but I set everything aside so that I could record today because I have missed being on YouTube so much. You guys look at this coffee cup. I'm in love with it. I'm in love with it. I got it from my friend Rebecca. She um, had me in, in a gift ex Let me try that again. <laughs> she had me in a gift exchange and she sent this to me in my package and I have just been in love with it every, ever since. It is so, oh my gosh, this is, it's high quality handmade. Um, I will put the, uh, link and stuff to this website where's it from moon mountain pottery i'll put the link in the description to the website so y'all can check out these uh mugs because wow i'm in love with it but anyway um i am gonna sit down and talk about what i've been knitting on where i've been what's going on with the family and all that stuff um but first we need to put a package together actually we have a couple packages to put together so we're gonna go do that first, and then we're gonna meet back, and we're gonna talk yarn. It is now 3 p.m. and it is no longer gloomy outside. It's actually very bright. So now I'm like overexposed. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Also, the neighbor is mowing. So if y'all hear the uh, mower in the background, that's why. He's over there mowing. Also, say good afternoon to Blue. If y'all watched our earlier podcast, oh, by the way, Elizabeth is not here. Forgot to mention that or even acknowledge that. <laughs> Elizabeth is not here today. I really wanted to record today, but it's a work day for her, so she's at work. <clears throat> but if y'all remember, well, if you had watched our earlier podcast, you remember how excited I was when we got this microphone. It's called a Blue Snowball, and I just call him Blue. So say good afternoon to Blue. Blue wants you to hit that thumbs up. It is now the afternoon and I'm ready to chillax for a sec and talk to you guys about what's going on over here. So first of all, I might put a timestamp or something somewhere in case you kind of just really don't care what's been going on in my life and you just want to get to the yarn and stuff. It's fine. You might be able to look for a timestamp. Um, so the reason I was in my A I actually, um, for a long time I've had, I guess we'll just call it an anxiety disorder, but it's a little bit more than that. Um, I've had an anxiety disorder and I was able to see a doctor and the doctor wanted to put me on antidepressants and I've never been on antidepressants before. So I went ahead and said, okay. 
and I got on the antidepressants, and she also gave me um, an aller- or allergy, an anxiety pill. I said allergy because for whatever reason, even though it's pretty like wet outside, like it rained today and stuff, my allergies are really bad. I don't know what's going on. Usually when it's a rainy day, my allergies, they're, they're not a problem. But today they're pr- a pretty big problem. And then like, cause my nose is running and I keep sneezing. So if you see pauses in the video, it's probably because I'm sneezing. But yeah, I took an allergy pill and the allergy pill is not really doing much. So I'm gonna go ahead and apologize in advance if you, if I end up sniffling. Right now I'm totally fine, but I just came in from outside, so I might start sniffling again. But she put me on antidepressants and an, an anxiety pill, um, just like a trigger pill whenever my anxiety, like whenever I start to enter a panic attack, I take the anxiety pill and then it stops everything. So those are fine. Um, that's the first kind of anxiety pill that I've ever been on before. And it was all right. It, 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 does, a, it does its job, I guess, but it doesn't really help with like the deeper cause. It's more of like curing one of the symptoms. You know what I'm saying? But she was like, here's an antidepressant. I think one of the big problems is that um, there are some issues with how your body is producing certain chemicals. So she put me on the antidepressant and gradually increase my dosage. So every year it never fails when it comes to the winter time, usually right after Christmas, I start entering like this depressive period where I'm just like, I'm really depressed. And it, it's usually over within like a month. And this one I just couldn't kick. I could not kick this depression. It was like, it lasted two months and well, probably more like three months. It was damn near three months that that depression period lasted. So that's why I wasn't on YouTube. I was not on Instagram. I was on anything. Like I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to be with Coda or be by myself. I didn't want to talk to anyone. Talking to people felt like a chore. Like just even like there was a package that I needed to ship out. Even shipping that package, it was a chore. I could not get myself to do it. It was bad. For any of you that suffer with that type of depression on like a regular basis, you have my full sympathy and apologies. Like it is awful. I only had to deal with it for three months. I could not imagine dealing with that like weekly, daily. I know for some people, depression is a much bigger thing to deal with than what, than my lot. And y'all are, are superhumans going day to day, living like that. And you have my full sympathy. So I started to dislike my doctor because she was kind of trying to force me into doing things that I was uncomfortable with. And... I just, I can't do that. It was going to send me backwards. I've been on this like forward motion with my anxiety and stuff. And I could not deal with a doctor that was, okay. So to be honest, what she was doing was she was sitting at the end of a finishing, uh, at the end of the finish line, um, dangling a bag of pills. That's what she was doing. She was basically saying if you can't do this, I can't give you any more medicine. And wow, now that I've actually said that out loud and it's just, it's not just like a silent reflection in my head. Wow. Anyway, that's what she was doing. And so I was just, I stopped taking the medicine. I stopped taking it because I couldn't meet her finish lines. I couldn't meet her goals. And I also, like, on top of the depression and just, like, general guilt that I feel in life, I couldn't also deal with the guilt that she was causing me because of the fact that I couldn't meet these goals that she was setting. So I was like, this is one piece of my life that I need to cut out right now because I cannot handle much more. So I cut the antidepressants, I cut the doctor, and lo and behold, a week later... I found myself wanting to pick up my phone again. 
after I had stopped my antidepressants. I wanted to get on Marco Polo and chat with people. I wanted to get on Instagram and make posts. I wanted to dye yarn. I wanted to knit. I wanted to crochet. I wanted to do it all. So it was very apparent that the antidepressants were actually having an opposite effect on me. It was actually sending me into a depression rather than doing anti-depression type work. <laughs> so it was actually becoming the, the cause of my problems. And that's why I was gone from Instagram for so long. That's why I've been gone from YouTube. And I've been trying to do a lot of catch up on Instagram, like a lot. So YouTube had to sit on the back burner for a sec. But here I am. Um, Elizabeth is also ready to start steamrolling ahead with, um, with the podcast. But she is leaving for California again. I think actually like our third episode last year. And maybe the fourth one. She wasn't present then either because she had to go to California. She's got um, family out there. So I'm sure she'll have some great stories to tell us when she gets back. And um, she also has two tops that she's trying to finish by the time she goes. So she'll be able to show those off when she gets back too. Um, but so if you've made it this far, it's time to start talking about yarn. Um, and I'm actually wearing my first FO. This is my first completed hoodie. I started a couple hoodies, um, but they just weren't, I wasn't vibing with them. Like the pattern was a little like weirdly written or I just couldn't keep myself monogamous to it, I guess. Um, so like a lot of them have fallen on the back burner, but this one I've always come back to. Um, I, it's actually two years old. <laughs> I started this two years ago and, um, over the first year after I had started it, I was like picking it up here and there. Like I would do like a row of stripes and then stop. And I got to the point where I was just like, I wasn't working on it at all. So two years later, I picked up my last sleeve. It was this one right here. I was about right here on it. Yeah, that was all I had to complete this hoodie. That was it. A half of a sleeve. It took me two years to do one day's worth of work. That's my procrastination level sometimes. But this is the Montrealer. I'm looking over here because I got my iPad set up so I can see what's going on on the camera. But this is my Montrealer. Whiskey just walked in. Hi, Whiskey. Would you like to say hi to the people? No, she would not. So I'm gonna stand up so you can see it, so you can take a look. This is it in all its glory with some ends hanging out. This is by, oh my gosh, I hope I don't mess this name up. Vincent Deslandis. I think that's how you say his name. He is by Dells on Instagram. And this is actually not, this stripe pattern is not how this uh, sweater is supposed to be knit, but I had um, what are they called? Car no, not Karen. Uh, Lion Brand Mandala. Lion Brand Mandala. That's what I wanted to use for this project because I was like, I don't want to buy some kind of expensive yarn and then put this down because this was my first, I think. I think this was my, no, it was my second sweater. The first sweater I ever knit was the Diaphanous Raglan by Jessie May. Highly recommend. That is a fun knit. It is very fun. Um, but yeah, this is by Vincent Deslandes. Um, I got the... I just lost it again. Lion Brand Mandala. Um, I believe this one is called Wishing Well. Or some kind of cove. Maybe it's called Cove. Either way, it's a blue one. It's a blue one. Um, here's the hood. It has a hood. And a lot of people, like in the pattern, it says to make an I cord. But I just used a piece of, um, what is this rope called? Like the things that people do, like the wall hangings. Macrame. It's macrame rope. That's what it is. I just fed it through. Knock my hat sideways. 
Um, I think if I were to knit this again, I would do the hood a little differently. It was done flat in two pieces and then seamed up the middle. And if you can see, I'm not the best at seaming things. There's a very obvious seam here. <laughs> and I don't really like it. I don't know how well it can be seen on the outside. No, no, it looks good on the outside. But like, that's the thing with a hood is when it lays flat, you see the inside, you don't see the outside. So I think um, I would maybe find a way to do the hat as one piece. We'll see. Um, but Coda's obsessed with this. He's never been like so obsessed with one of my projects before. Like I, I'll like show him an FO or, or like something I'm working on and he's like, oh yeah, that's cool. But like every time I wear this, he compliments me on it. He's like, I can't believe you made that. I can't believe you made that. And it makes me feel so good. So yeah, that's my um, FO today. I don't think it's my only one. It's not my only one. I forgot my other one. BRB. My other FO is this beauty right here. That's a bow. <laughs> this is my newest design. Um, it's crochet. And it's just a super simple tarot cloth. Now when I say tarot cloth, that was the intention behind it. That is what I created this for as like a little um, cloth that my tarot cards are in here right now um, that you can store your tarot cards in and keep them safe and clean. And it also serves as a mat for you to do tarot on. So let me pull it open here. Here's a look, see if we can get those in focus or not. Maybe. More paranormal activity. This is the, I guess you would call it like a tie, a lanyard, a tie, something like that. Um, and it's just two tassels on the end of a chain this is a crochet chain that's all it is um i held four pieces of this fringe yarn i'm not sure what this fringe yarn is it was gifted to me by one of a kate it's just like this beautiful like neutral tan color and it's got um like golden it's got a golden halo to it it's beautiful it, it matches this orange so well um and this pattern is actually going to be a youtube pattern this will be up over on my other channel, my Michael Sean yarn channel. That's going to be where I'm. So this is going to be the podcast channel. And then over on the Michael Sean yarn channel is where I'm going to be putting like um, patterns that go along with my brand or um, tutorials for my designs, um, anything like that. So I just opened up the cloth and here are my tarot cards. What we got? The pillar. And here's a look at what the cloth actually looks like. It might be kind of hard to see because it's not sitting on a flat background. But it's about, mm, I would say like 18 inches long and about 12 inches wide. You got some lace going on here and then some puff stitches, some rows of puff stitches on either side with some double crochets. So this is super simple. Like I said, I call this a tarot cloth because that was the intention, but this, like, I give you the pattern. There's, like, this mohair, like, this halo that's on this. It gets all over this. <laughs> I kind of love it, though. I'm not going to lie. I kind of love it. Um, So I give you the repeat for right here, just this panel. So with this one panel... You can do as many repeats as you like. You can make this into a blanket. You can make it into a plant rug, which is, it's a video tutorial, if I didn't already say that. Um, this will be a free pattern. It's just like a, a tutorial that shows you how to do this, how to repeat it, how to replicate it, how to do everything. Um, except make the tassel tie, because this is kind of an extra thing. It's not really meant to go along with the cloth. 
Um, that will be a tutorial that I put on my Instagram. Which, by the way, if y'all don't follow me on Instagram, why not? You can find me at Michael Sean, and instead of a W in Sean, it's a double U. So I'm still recording some footage for the tarot cloth. I don't know what I'm going to name it. Maybe I'll just call it something simple like the boho cloth or something like that. Um, but once it's up, I will link it in the description down below. So maybe if it's like three months in the future and this is up, if you're watching three from three months from now, you should be able to click a link down there. Not that I'm saying it's going to be three months before this comes out. I'm just saying. Also, I forgot to say that this is yarn that was gifted to me from Yesenia of Senia Studio, jewelry maker to the stars. If you don't know who she is, I'll have her link below and you need to go check her out because she's amazing. She gifted me this because of my love for orange. It's like a caramelly burnt orange. And this is from uh, Jake of Ken Yarn. It's um, worsted. That's what this is. It's a, it's his worsted weight yarn. And I can't remember what he named this. If he still carries it, you'll see it. You'll know it right away. It's like a burnt caramel color and it's freaking gorgeous. Okay, so what am I working on right now? I'm going to start small and then we'll work up to bigger. I've got four projects here. So first of all, I have cast on a brioche mioche. If y'all have followed the podcast, you will remember me talking about this before. This is my design. Um, and my friend Sunny of Noodly Knits, um, she does not trust herself to knit beanies, but she really wants one. So she asked me to knit her one, and that's what I'm doing. And I don't think the color is going to show up very well here because of how overblown everything is. But this is, this pink, this lighter color is Sakura Blossom. And this is my yarn. And some of that is still available, actually. And this other yarn is a green yarn, if you can't tell. Maybe if I flip it inside out. Hmm, you still can't tell. This lighting is so harsh today. That's a little better. Um, this is Desert Garden. So it's Sakura Blossom plus Desert Garden. These are two of the colorways that were inspired by spring and flowers. Um, and I'm pretty sure both of these are still available on my site. I don't think I've sold out of them yet. Um, but these are DK and I really enjoy my DK base. I've never really knit with it before until I want to say it was Christmas time. I had cast on can y'all hear that siren? Somebody's in trouble. But around Christmas time, I cast on a project. Oh, it was a literally so good beanie. That's what it was. And I was using my DK yarn and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this yarn. It's like very soft and very plump. And um, it was just a dream to, to knit with. So I was glad that Sunny asked me to cast on a DK project for her because I love working with this DK yarn. And I love these two colors together. It's giving me very much like boho spring. I'm way into it. This is gonna be a perfect spring beanie for Sunny. Yeah, super cute. It's a super easy pattern. And I've been talking about it over on um, Instagram um, about how some people are just so scared to start brioche. And I understand. Um, because of like the horror stories that people talk about when it comes to brioche, particularly dropping a stitch or making, making a mistake. I get it. That's very scary. But, um, if you can do a yarn over a slip one, a knit two together and a purl two together, you're totally ready to brioche. It's just like any other pattern. You got to do yarn overs. You got to do slips. You got to do knit two together. Like basically if you can do a sweater, then you can do, then you can do a, uh, a brioche, at least this brioche beanie, at least. I mean, I've never, I've actually never knit another brioche, um, project besides this. This is how I learned <laughs> was designing this beanie. So I feel like if I can knit this just like learning, 
I feel like you're ready, especially if you've been knitting for at least a year. Um, so yeah, it's free. It's in my Ravelry store. I'll link it down below. Go check it out. Go cast one on. See what you think about it. Maybe you'll love brioche. I actually love it. Is such a rhythm. It is such a rhythm. When you sit down and you start doing the brioche and um, watching the watching the stitches like start to make sense and come to life in the fabric because when when you first cast on like the first two or three rows it just looks like a jumbled mess like it really doesn't look like anything <laughs> and you're like second guessing yourself like am I doing this right I don't even know so you need to keep that in mind if you've never knit brioche before the first you won't even see the brioche fabric until you get to like row 10 then you'll know that you're doing it correctly. Um, but as long as you're following the steps, you're going to be doing it correctly anyway. The next one is also in my DK weight yarn. And this is a newer one. Looked like I started a stitch and didn't finish it. <laughs> um, this is also DK weight. It is a literally so good beanie. And okay, so the reason I cast this on, I'm going to need to turn these projects this way so you can actually see the colors. Um, the only reason I cast this on is because I'm so freaking in love with this colorway. This is one of my newer springy colorways. Well, actually, it's fall. <laughs> but I just, um, dyed up this colorway, uh, in this spring. And it's called Awaiting Autumn. And it's got these, it's, um, overall, it's like a peachy tan tone. So like kind of springy, beginning of summer. Um, but then there are uh, these like pine blue greens and reds and um, mustard, like a golden mustard. And there's oranges in there. So it's mostly spring, summer. And then you got like these uh, speckly parts that are, here's what it looks like. I do still have some of these. Whoop, there we go. That is what it looks like all skinned up. I know it looks like a ton of color, but it's really not a ton of color. It almost reminds me of like a fall confetti cake, I guess. See, it's just like specks of color, just like splotches of color. But the main color of it is that like peachy tan. And um, oh, I forgot to say that I'll have my Etsy store linked in the description too. If you want to check out my yarn. Everything that I've shown so far that is my yarn is still in stock. I dyed up quite a bit of it um, to last the shop a minute because I am waiting on an order of yarn. Um, so, and I don't think it's going to be here until next week. So for at least the week after Easter, these should still be available in my shop. Yeah, this is the Literally So Good Beanie. Um, this is not a free pattern, uh, but I will link this below as well. If you like, I'll throw a picture of it too. Like I'll throw up a picture of it uh, so that you know what the Literally So Good Beanie looks like. Also one of my favorite patterns. I don't ever not have one of those on the needles. That is like the Literally So Good Beanie is my social knitting. Like when my mom comes over or if I'm going to a restaurant or a friend's house or if I'm knitting in the car because it's just plain knitting in the round. It's not something complicated that has like a, a bunch of uh, decreases and stuff like I mean, it does at the end, but it's quite a bit of just regular plain knitting until you get to the end when you need to do decreases. Okay, next up is some crochet. And these are two different blues. These actually came in my knit crate last month. I am crocheting some farmhouse granny squares, my favorite granny square pattern of all time. Um, there's this knit crate actually came with four different blues in it, ranging from like this is the oh whoop, not that one. This is the lightest blue, and then it goes to this blue, and then another blue that's a little bit darker, and then finally it ends with a navy. So it's basically like a fade. And um my nephew Braxton has outgrown his baby blanket. He is a toddler now, so he needs um, a blanket that's a little bit bigger. These are super wash. Um, I normally don't like gifting anything but acrylic or cotton 
to people in my family because they're just not that great at taking care of things that are wool or any type of animal fiber. <sighs> I probably shouldn't even give them plant fiber if we're being honest. But as soon as I got these, it made me think of Braxton. So I am making him a granny square blanket. Um, I'll probably throw in like another color, like gray. Um, probably the, the pound of, is it called pound of love? Yeah. Pound of love from lion brand that like heathered gray. That's one of my favorite grays. So I'll probably do some more granny squares, um, that are gray to mix in with these and find some kind of cool way to do the fade. I'm not sure yet, but, um, it should be pretty close to completing this by the time I do my next podcast. So you'll get to see it then. Hopefully. I'm not going to make any promises. <laughs> and finally, my biggest whip right now. This is the Garden Gate. I can't remember if it's called the Garden Gate Pullover or the Garden Gate Sweater. Whoop. Okay, there we go. So this um, has an unfinished neckline. That is how it's supposed to be worn. But your boy doesn't like unfinished necklines. I think it's supposed to have unfinished hems too, but your boy also don't like that. So, <laughs> um, this will have a hood. I'm going to add a hood onto this. Um, this will probably be where I try to, um, no, actually I'll use the hood from the superstitious pullover. I'll just adjust for the fact that this is, this is fingering weight. This is a fingering weight sweater. So <clears throat> I'm not really enjoying this as much. As I did the Montrealer because the Montrealer was DK weight. It's actually supposed to be um, worsted, but I ended up using um, a DK weight because I like the lighter feel. I feel like DK weight it it can like especially when you're just doing like stock and knit, it can kind of hang, you know, it can kind of hang, especially when you have positive ease. Um, on a larger body that's a lot of fabric and it's kind of you know it's kind of it's draping and pulling and it's just not cute so i i like dk for sweaters it's much lighter and the drape isn't as tense or <laughs> as intense so um i'm knitting this out of this is my yarn again uh this is siren's cove that is this blue yarn both of these yarns are not in stock. These are from my very first release. I kept these um, skeins intentionally uh, for myself to use for a project because they were from my first dyeing. Um, so we have Siren's Cove here. That's the blue. And then the peach yarn is called Peach Babe. And I just... I'm going to do a close-up here of this color work. I love the way that this blue and peach plays together. It's like subtle, but not subtle at the same time. It's very hard to, to describe. Um, but I am so excited. I finally got some motivation for this. I started this last year. I want to say around fall time. Yeah, it was around fall. I started this and then I, so I like, the color work was a breeze. It was a breeze to stay motivated with the color work. But I find that with like all color work projects, I feel like I should just knit color work all the time because I stay really motivated because I want to see like, I want to see the design come to life and I just keep going. So once I got past the yoke and I finished out that color work and it was just stocking it in the round, fingering weight, I lost all motivation for it. I just couldn't. I had no patience. But... What I didn't realize was I actually started the sweater. So I'm I'm a big guy. So um, my torso, like, so up here in my chest, I'm like a 49, 50. I might even be like 51. I can't remember. Um, but so I started the sweater so that I would have um, only like two inches of positive ease for the whole sweater. So I did like the, I can't remember if it's a 51 inch or a 52 inch. I, that's what I did for all of the yoke. And now that I'm through that, 
I've gone down the body and now I'm getting to the point of like my um my belly region which goes out. So now I'm to the point where I'm ready for some shaping. At this point I have to keep track of rows again. So that's keeping me motivated. It's keeping me interested. So I put on like 30 rows onto this in like the past two days, which is amazing for me. That's amazing for me. I can't usually stay that um, dedicated to a project and I'm doing it and I'm really excited. You know, um, when you get to sleeves, sleeves are always, um, well, not always, but for the most part, they're always tapered. So there is some, you got to keep track of your rows and stuff and that gives you a goal to work towards. So I think as soon as I get done with the body, I'm going to be ready to do the sleeves. Um, I don't think those will be a problem for me. Um, so I said that, you know, this is uh, an unfinished hem, which basically means you'll bind off and then that's it. Like it's just all stockinette, you bind off. And then the little stockinette roll is kind of like your hem. Instead of doing that, I'm going to do an I-cord bind off, but... It's going to be the flat type of I, I cord. If you know what I'm talking about, it's kind of like, it's like an even amount of stitches and on one side you knit, slip, knit, slip, and then on the other side you slip, knit, slip, knit. And then you have like a flat I cord. I started a design last year because I was obsessed with the flat I cord. I started a design last year where I was able to bind off doing the flat I chord and I really think that I want to do that with this so it'll just be like kind of like a shirt it'd be kind of like how the hem of a shirt is how it's just got like all the way around it's got like this flat separate piece <laughs> I don't know how to describe it um so that's what I'm going to be doing with this and then also the hood so I'm excited that I am able to pick this up again and I'm able to start moving forward with it. And I hope I have lots of progress to show you guys in the next one. And that is it, you guys. That's all I've got for you today. I wanted to keep this one short um, just to get back into like the hang of things so that my editing isn't going to take that long because I'm going to have to relearn some editing stuff. Um, but... All in all, I'm glad that I'm back on YouTube. I'm glad that I found the motivation to get back. I don't know how often I'll be recording. Maybe every two weeks. Maybe maybe once a month. You never know. Um, it really just depends on how I feel. Some days I just want to turn the camera on and talk. Sometimes, some days I just I don't want to talk to anyone. So, <laughs> Virgo problems. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much to the people that have subscribed and to the people that comment on my videos. Y'all make this stuff worth doing. Like, sometimes um, making YouTube videos, it can be quite a hassle. It can be quite a hassle. So y'all that subscribe and comment on my videos and stuff, you guys keep me going. You guys keep me motivated to do this stuff. And I'm excited to be talking with you guys again um, after this video gets uploaded. Um, the links to probably almost everything I talked about are going to be down in the description below. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, y'all.